Call Allah Yah Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakakadash, Rakadam. Would have give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, who will teach the truth well and in humility and in sincerity. The title of this lesson is going to be called, uh, give me one second, it's going to be called Comfort in the Kingdom. <clears throat> I'm going to start this lesson off by the chapter of the book of Romans. Chapter 8 In verse 18 It says for I, it says, For I reckon the sufferings of this present time Are not worthy to be compared with the glory That shall be revealed in us So what The reason why I titled the lesson Comfort in the Kingdom Is because on this side You know the hopeful elect are going to, are going to be catching hell, afflicted by our own people, afflicted by the heathen, afflicted at our jobs. Uh, we got to accept pretty much whatever the slave master wants to give us, whatever the slave master wants to give us. Uh, we have to deal with family members that that don't believe, dealing with heartache. We just catching all hell here. That's why I started this lesson off by Romans eight and eighteen. It says, for the earnest expectation for the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of Yahweh. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath who subject who subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of the corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of Yahweh. For we know that the whole generation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. This is Romans 8 23. I just read down from 18. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. <clears throat> Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we wait, do do we with patience wait for it? So we gotta wait for this kingdom, man. We gotta have patience in this thing. We gotta uh just be patient. Don't let these afflictions really really just just get to you like that you can't the, you can't let things get to you you gotta just whatever people say whatever people do you gotta just take it with a grain of salt and continue to move forward you know what i mean people are gonna say what they say people are gonna have their opinions even people that you do good to people that you look out for will, will have something to say what you say to you have something negative to say to you you know what i'm saying uh people that people that you love people that you that you actually you know, your own people. You know what I mean? Revelation 2 and 9, it says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them, which say that they are the Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, <clears throat> John the Baptist, Baptist is saying, yo, you know what I'm saying? You know, Yahweh knows our works, man. Yahweh knows our tribulation. Yahweh knows our poverty, but we are rich. Yeah, we're rich in the birthright, man. That Esau's trying to take away with this damn jab. You see what I'm saying? So we're going to jump into Micah 7 and 9. <clears throat> it says, I will bear the indignation of Yahweh. Yeah, we got to bear our judgment. We got to finish off the tail end of our captivity because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me he will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness so we got to deal we got to bear the indignation of Yahweh man no matter no matter what we feel no matter how much groaning or pain it's going to be we got to bear it we got to deal with it because at the end of the day we fucked up with the Lord, man. Shit. 
you can blame the other nations as much as you want, but it's really our fault. But we getting ready to have our way in a second, Yahweh willing. You know, it says uh, Job 1 and 21 and said, uh, this is for brothers who, you know, you if you lost some properties, or you lost a car, or you lost women, whatever you lost. Job 1 and 21 says, and said, naked came out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. Yahweh gave and Yahweh taketh away. Blessed be the name of Yahweh. And all this Job sinned not, nor charged Yahweh foolishly. Meaning, well, why us? Why could, you know what I mean? Job understood what he was going through, the afflictions. You see what I'm saying? So we're going to go to Matthew chapter 10. So, man, if I was y'all, I wouldn't be worried about no riches on this side. Worried about having things on this side. You do get benefits on this side, but eventually you're going to have to sell all that shit anyway. You're only going to get to enjoy it, enjoy it for a moment. So, it's just best to just dwell in this wisdom, man. Get you a little dog. You know, get, get, get. Because at the end of the day, man, you really got you, man. You really got to work out your own salvation. Yeah, having fellowship is cool. But, you know, once that's over, after an hour or whatever, after camp or after you get off the phone, you got yourself. You know, the Lord, when it's time for your judgment, he ain't finna look at the whole group. He finna look at each individual. Like, well, what, he, what is his works? What is his works? You know what I'm saying? Everybody's gonna pay for their own sin, you know, in this time. You know what I'm saying? Matthew 10 and 16. It says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. You see what I'm saying? So we got to be out here wise as serpents and harmless as doves, meaning we got to hit them with that aloha. You know what I'm saying? When you see the devil walking, you can't, if you're at your job, you can't be like, oh, well, you're the devil. You got to be like, well, hey, how you doing, sir? Tell him Jesus loves him, you know? That just keeps you from getting in arguments and strife created and they have the power to th lock us up and throw us in jail. That's why the scripture says agree with the adversary quickly. You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> so, sure, man. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28 and 68. It says, And the Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be so and ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So these are the curses of the Israelites for us going off, man. You know, so you understand that we, you know, understand why we going through what we going through, and it's called it's called generational curses, man that we put on ourselves all you gotta do is look into the book of deuteronomy uh the 28th chapter start at 15 and read down the book of jeremiah it's talking about this american captivity right here right now uh, you know uh the book of ezekiel let's go to daniel chapter 7 and verse 25 It says, and he spake great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times are divided of time. So, that's those white folks, man. These so called white folks, these devils, man. Wear out the saints of the Most High. Yeah, starting with them damn cotton fields, man. All the way down to corporate America, all the way down to the fast food restaurant all the way down to just even homeless like you know they don't want to give a brother the opportunity to really flourish in this kingdom which really it's not meant for us to flourish in this kingdom as you can see Tulsa Oklahoma got got bombed you know what I mean so it's just best to just you know live within your means eat this <laughs> eat this roll and just stay down with the scriptures man stay down in faith you know you know, uh, 
Uh, we're going to go to Daniel chapter 8. Actually, we're going to keep it moving. We're going to go to Romans chapter 8. chapter 8 verse 35 it says who shall separate us from the love of Hamashiach shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword <clears throat> so it says as it, I'm jumping to the 36th verse well, pretty much, I'm going to break down this verse first. So pretty much what this saying is, are, is, are you going to allow what you're going through in the world to separate you from the love of Yahweh Shah, which is our only way to the, our only way to Yahweh, man. Our only way to the uh, Kakarash, man. Because he, he is our blood sacrifice on the right hand for our sins. So without the Mashiach, man, we are doomed as a nation. See what I'm saying? So, so are you going to allow a family member dying or something you got to go through or affliction or racism make you say, well, well, I'm not dealing with the Lord no more or I'm not dealing with the scriptures no more. Is that going to make you feel that way? Or are you going to stay with, are you going, are you going to be a, a, a Romans chapter, uh, a Romans chapter eight and 18? You see what I'm saying? You wanna, you wanna, you wanna just endure whatever you gotta go through and understand that the kingdoms are around the corner, and don't, and don't, and don't bitch about it, man. Just, just, Yahweh Shai never complained, man. Isaiah 53, bro. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna go to James, chapter one. Look at James chapter 1 and verse 12. It says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which Yahweh hath promised to them that love him. See what I'm saying? Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of Yahweh. For Yahweh cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and is enticed. <clears throat> so pretty much, man, you know, <clears throat> starting off with James, first chapter, verse uh, 12, blesses the man that endureth temptation. And he will receive the, uh, when he is tried, he received the crown of life. So you, 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 you want to just endure the temptation of this world, man. Uh, endure you know the lust of this world because you got to understand you're going to get everything you want and some in the kingdom remember it's the Lord's good pleasure to give you the kingdom James first chapter second verse my brethren count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. You see what I'm saying? If you lack any wisdom, let him ask of Yahweh, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not. And he shall be given him. See? But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. So meaning once you once you deal, once you come into this truth. Once you come into this truth, man, you know, you, you can't go back to the world. You can't.
can't go back to like worldly religions. You see what I'm saying? You can't go back to what you used to do. You got to put off the old man and you can't waver, man. Count it all joy when you fall into many temptations because, man, you're being tried for the, for the kingdom, bro. You know, the Lord rid a lot of us off, man. It's called the two-thirds, man. Zechariah 13 and 8, bro. You know? <clears throat> it says, uh, we're going to go to James 5 and 11. James chapter 5 and verse 11. It says, Behold, we count them happy which, which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of, the, of Yahweh, that Yahweh is very pitiful and tender and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither. Well, we're going to stop at 11. It says, uh, Yeah, so we got to endure like, like Job, man. In the end of Yahweh, man, remember Job got his riches and some, got his riches back, I think, sevenfold, man. So, hey, man, it's all about just running this race, bro. It's really a race, man. Who gonna, who gonna fold before the finish line and who gonna stay down all the way into the finish line? If you gotta crawl to the finish line, you know what I'm saying? If you fall, a just man follows seven times, you know? You know what I mean? So we're going to jump to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13, it says, but he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. So, yo, all this shit, man, you just got to tough it out, man. You know, hey, man, I'm going to just roll the punches on this one. You know what I mean? It's just, it's real simple, man. We're going to jump in Isaiah 53. Because I want to, uh, I want to give praises to Yahweh Shai, man. To Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Or Kakadash. We're going to go to Isaiah 53. And we're just going to read the whole thing. It says, Who have believed thy report? And to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? And the arm of Yahweh is Yahweh Shai, man. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry tree, out of a dry ground. For have no he hath no form of comeliness, meaning Yahweh Shai was out here out here looking rough, you know? And we should and we and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were uh, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. <clears throat> Surely he have borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Uh, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of Yahweh and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And this is the, the grace and mercy that the Lord has for us because we are, we are, we are, we're not the uh, we're not the uh, we're not really a great nation as far as the Lord. We we haven't we have not we have failed to meet the Lord's standards. So that's why the scripture says, you know, there's not one man who haven't fallen short. You know what I'm saying? So we all fall short. So that's why Yahweh Shah came through and walked perfectly and was an example and was a sacrifice for the children of Israel. For to be a praise in the earth for Yahab amongst the other nations for Yahab Hashem Yahushai. And that's why he said, the Lord said, for my name's sake only. He don't want these other nations to think by their strength that they took us out. You see what I'm saying? So that's the mercy. It ain't, it ain't about us. It's about the Lord. It's about Yahushai. It's about the Rakakadash. <clears throat> the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. See, so all of us went off. You know, all the great prophets went off. 
You know what I'm saying? We have turned everyone to his own way, and Yahweh have laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. See, Yahweh Shah never bitched about his situation. Yahweh Shah said, Well, oh, I have a heavy lot. Yahweh Shah never said that, bro. That's weakness, man. You should say, Man, I'm just thankful that, you know, I'm thankful to even have a lot. Because you got brothers in the ground right now waiting, waiting on their blood to be avenged. You see what I'm saying? He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. So Yahweh Shai never opened his mouth, man. Now I'm going to precept this with uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. For the brothers that so well, 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 we're not Yahweh Shai. Well, I'm going to prove to you that we are like Yahweh Shai. <laughs> we'll go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 16. It says, For who have known the mind of Yahweh, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Hamashiach, man. So we understand the mindset of Yahweh Shai through these scriptures, man, through these parables, man. We understand not to bitch about our situation, to, you know, we understand that the kingdom is around the corner, man. We understand how to deal with this society. Wise as serpents, gentle as doves, man. Especially if you ain't have to go through the Yahweh Shai went through, getting beat on, spit on, knowing he had them spiritual powers to do whatever the hell he wanted back then. He was already bringing people up from the dead. So you know he had spiritual powers to destroy that the whole Roman Empire. But he had to take that lick for us. You see what I'm saying? So, kingdom right around the corner, y'all. You know what I'm saying? We're going to jump to Isaiah chapter 14. It says, For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So this is going to be the reverse of the curses. <clears throat> this is actually going to be us in the kingdom, man. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. So we're going to rule over these people, man. Over these Ishmaelites. Over these damn Moabs. Amen, Amlet, Edom, Ham. We're going to rule over all these nations. So we're going to start in Isaiah 14. We're going to jump to verse 3. It says, and it shall come to pass in that day. The Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. So, <clears throat> man, just it just don't. It's, 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 this is just easy work, man. Isaiah chapter sixty. chapter 60 it says um, arise shine for the light is come and the glory of Yahweh is risen upon thee for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but Yahweh shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings of the brightness of thy rising lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together they come to thee thy son shall come from far and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side <clears throat> then shall thou then thou shalt see 
and flow together and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be covered unto thee oh excuse me y'all I'm reading the wrong scripture actually I'm jumping down actually no I'm reading the right thing this is talking about the curses the multitude of the camel shall cover thee the drone dairies of Midian and Ephah all they from Sheba shall come they shall bring gold and incense and they shall shew forth praises of Yahweh all the flocks of Kadar shall be gathered together unto thee the rams of Neboth shall minister unto thee they shall come up with acceptance on my altar and I will glorify the house of my glory who are these that flies a cloud and as the doves of their widow of their windows mm. surely the isles shall wait for me in the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from far their silver and their gold with them unto the name of Yahweh, unto the name of Yahweh, thy power and the Holy One of Israel because he hath glorified thee and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls and this is talking about the kingdom this is why I wanted to go in Isaiah 60 Salakia for the little hiccup earlier and the king shall minister unto thee for in my wrath I smote thee but in my favor have I had mercy on thee all praises to Yahweh therefore thy gates shall be continually they shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles that their kings may be brought for the nation and kingdoms that will not serve thee shall perish yea those nations shall be utterly wasted <clears throat> and that's going to be through them ICBM missiles man and them chariot beams <laughs> how was I going to come back and, and be a, a whole nother a whole nother character man it says uh, he will not meet thee as a man the glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee the fir tree the pine tree <clears throat> and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary and I will make the feet of I will make the place of my feet glorious the sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee meaning these other nations are going to be bending themselves down with they're going to be our servants uh, Isaiah 14 <clears throat> it says down at the soles of thy feet and they shall call thee the city of Yahweh, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Thou shalt suck also, also suck the milk of the Gentiles. So we're going to take their riches. Well, it's really our riches. <laughs> And shall suck the breast of kings. They're just going to be our slaves, man. And thou shalt know that I, Yahweh, that I, Yahweh, am the Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. For brass will I bring gold, and for iron will I bring silver. And for wood, brass, and for stones, iron, I will also make thy officers peace and thy exactors righteous. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation, and thy gates praise. The sun shall no more be no more the light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But Yahweh shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God, thy power, I mean thy power, thy glory. <clears throat> thy sun shall no more go down. Neither shall thy moon withdraw thyself, for Yahweh shall be thine everlasting light, bro. And the days of thy mourning shall be ended. <clears throat> thy people shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. <clears throat> the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, <clears throat> that I may be glorified. That Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, Rakakadash, Barakadam, may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, Yahweh, will hasten it in his time. Hey, man, if it don't, and, that, and that's a beautiful, that is a beautiful scripture right there, man. That is a beautiful scripture right there, man. So this is uh, part one, comfort in the kingdom. I'm going to drop part two here soon. 
I want to give call Allah Yaha Bashim Yahusha, Bashim Rakakadash, Barakadam, all praises to Yaha Bashim Yahusha, Bashim Rakakadash, Barakadam. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. Hey man, Israel, we almost up out of here, man. Endure to the end. Matthew 10 and 16. No, Matthew 24 and 13. Salakia. Shalom.